And now for one of my favorite games ever made. Oh yeah, baby. It's Shock Troopers time. Alright, Shock Troopers is a uh, vertically scrolling run and gun, similar to games like Ikari Warriors, Heavy Barrel, and the like. But it's also completely awesome. But pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory. Hold down the button, you can uh, lock your direction. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, like a dream. You have a roll button, which actually uh, makes you completely invincible during the roll. You're vulnerable when coming out. Thanks to the roll, you can uh, pretty much dodge through any bullet in the game. There's no no super cheap hits. So, select team battle, and selecting team waifu, Milky Marie B, and Big Mama. And the game actually gives you a choice of three different routes, which are three di entirely different sets of stages. For some reason, you also have the option to switch routes in the uh, the middle of the game. I'm not sure why they put that in, but uh, has a little bit of variety, I guess. And so let's go. Usually, when I play this game, I play for score, but uh, some people have said they <laughs> they find uh, milking this game for score to be boring. I say they're crazy because it gives you more time to just listen to the the music. Oh man, I love the music in this game. One of the finest soundtracks on the video game history, if you ask me. But even though I'm not playing for score, I'm gonna go for maximum style points just by going for as many close range kills as possible. Milky's clo most uh, close range attacks are a nice stab, but Milky actually does a, a regular gunshot. And you get a power up when you, uh, when you kill enemies too. Usually it's a, a, a blue gem, which is 30,000 points, but every now and then they drop health ups and uh, special weapons. But yeah, this game came out in uh, December 1997, uh, a few months before Metal Slug 2 came out. And it didn't get much arcade distribution. I think uh, most arcades were, were waiting for Metal Slug 2. There's not many, uh, not many arcades were actually buying a lot of new Neo Geo games at that time. Unless they were fighters or, or Metal Slug. So this game kind of kind of fell by the wayside, and a lot of people uh, never never got to play it in the arcade. It has been uh, gotten a few ports on various like SNK. Collections, the SNK Arcade Classics that came out on the uh, PS2 and the PSP, and uh, Shock Troopers also got a standalone port on the PS3. I think it got ported to the Wii also. On the virtual console. Do a no hit run. I've come close to, to doing a no damage run, but that's not going to happen. There will be no miss though. Starting to play for score again. I'm starting to like just stall in spots to be able to get some more close range skills. And the weird thing about destroying this uh, this box in the center, if you don't pick up the ban the bananas, the monkey comes and steals them. Oh, this is pretty funny. Oh, milky. That's that's cold. <laughs> That's a uh, one of the rare occurrences in the game where you get a bomb pickup, which uh, restores all your special special bomb weapons. They don't uh, 
They don't occur very often if uh, you're getting close range to kill, so you're the specific spots. And so here's the first boss, which is uh, one of my favorite tracks in the game, so I'm probably going to shut up for a bit. Scenes too. I'll let them rock. I'm not speedrunning this, so. No, he's secretly Tony Gibson. <laughs> So yeah, the plot of this game. The bad guy captured a scientist and forcing him to make a drug that will somehow help him create an army of invincible soldiers somehow. Sure. And now we're on a we're on a motorcycle. You can't get any close range kills on a motorcycle, so. And this is a nice little a little, nice little change of pace, I guess you could say. The entire game soundtrack is great. Like, that's the, uh, the whole reason... The whole reason I first became so obsessed with the game. I heard the music. You know how, like, the arcade uh, Neo Geo multi-slot cabinets, the two slots, the four slots, the six slots, they actually have headphone slots on them, which is pretty cool. You don't see those very often in, in arcade games. So I just, like, plug my old Game Boy headphones in and play some Neo. What do I think about the sequel? Um, I'll talk about that in a... On the next stage, because uh, again, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up a bit on this next part, just because uh, let everybody enjoy the music, because this is my favorite stage. some uh, lyrics in the background. Saying something about dynamite selection to every time, yeah. No, I am playing on, on name. Oh, I'm going too fast. I don't know. I want to let the music go a little bit. <laughs> This is the 
Worst speedrun ever. Alright, alright, I'll go to the boss. <laughs> Why melee only? Why not? She didn't flex. Every character has two different win poses, by the way. Uh, the difference between the three characters. Uh, some characters, uh, they have different stats. Like, uh, certain characters will be faster than the others. And uh, some characters take more damage. Uh, both Milky and Marie, they're both fast characters, but uh, they, take, uh, they take a lot more damage. Also, if you notice, Milky and uh, Marie, when they when you don't have a special weapon equipped, uh, their gun only fires one bullet out. Like that. But Big Mama fires two at once, so they're more powerful. Uh, Big Mama and Southern Cross are, are both like the, uh, I guess you could say, the biggest characters in the game. They're the slowest, but they, uh, they take the least amount of damage when you, when you get hit. So, it's nice to have a, uh, have both the fast characters and a, uh, big character for bosses. So, in case you get hit and you take damage, you'll, you'll take a little less damage. And if you run out of, uh, regular ammo, you can go to the, uh, goddamn monkey. You can go to the, whoa, the monkey passed the bananas. That usually doesn't happen. Never seen that happen. Maybe I hadn't scrolled the screen all the way. And yeah, Mama just punches the shit out of everything. You don't mess with Big Mama. Oh, also every character has a different uh, special weapon that you can see in the bottom left. Big Mama has a, uh, a rocket launcher. Milky has a bomb that, uh, that stays on the screen for a while and does a lot of damage. And uh, Marie B has a a rocket launcher that actually fires homing rockets, which is pretty nice. This is a, uh, a weird part of the game where you, you fight two mid-bosses, two uh, Wolverine wannabes. Or two Vega wannabes, I should say. Got some sick music too. Take a hit, that's okay. Because uh, one of the other things, uh, this is a little pro tip. If you kill a human boss like this with, with a close range attack, he actually drops a uh, first aid kit. So it'll restore your health in full. And you get uh, double points when you uh, kill any of him. Kill any enemy with a close range attack. Oh, don't cry, everybody. Also, if you are interested in speedrunning this game, you'll quickly find out that uh, that rolling actually moves you along faster than walking. Just like in real life. Ow. Oh, yes, Jazu and Gozu and Mezu from. <laughs> it's okay. Big Mama's she's beefy. She can take some hits. That's one of the things I like about this game. It's a uh, pretty forgiving for one credit play because there's there's a ton of health pickups if you're 
getting close range kills on enemies. Or they just drop from other sources, like tanks. Yeah, this isn't the, uh, the fastest route to the game. I think the, uh, the fastest route would be the, uh, the mountain route, but this is the, the route I usually play for score, so I'm used to it. I have, like, pretty much everything memorized. There's gonna be no surprises. Okay, up. Alright. Everybody's good on bombs. And now the third boss, it's another tank. That's one of the downsides of the game, they uh, they got a little lazy with the bosses. A lot of times you see the uh, same tank bosses. On the other routes you have some, you'll have like a, a jet plane boss and a, uh, a killer forklift boss. There's a little more variety there. And, oh shit! I'm switching to multi just use a bomb kit. As you can see, Milky took a, uh, a lot more damage than Big Mama. Three hits will kill her if you don't pick up any health ups. Let's look back around. Get some Milky to get some health. And now you gotta fight a human boss. On the third and sixth stages, human boss can come out of the tanks. And he's got some moots. Every time I see the health, I'm not fast enough to to switch to Milky. It should also be pointed out that the uh, the character switch animation, you're completely invincible during it. So you can just kind of take take bullets like that. So, I'm trying to get him down to when he's flashing, and like I just said, if you kill a human boss with a close range attack, Drops the first aid kit, you double points. Hi, Frame Abuse. See, now we have the option to, to switch routes. I'm still a little unsure why they put this in the game, but uh, if you uh, do end up switching routes, which we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the Valley route, uh, you end up playing an extra stage that's on a train. It's a, it's a pretty short stage, though. Yeah, I didn't get the, uh, the ass wind pose for, for Melky. Let's see if we get it this time. Oh god. Let's have these guys. There's some annoying enemy types in this game where they uh, they'll walk towards you, and then right when they get into melee range, they back away. Those two guys are just threw grenades. The jerks. But yeah, mastering the uh, the roll is like one of the most important things to this game. Like once you get the hang of uh, being able to roll through everything, the game becomes much more one CCable. Switch to Big Mama because there's a annoying mid boss right here. The red jetpack assholes, as I always call them. They fly around unpredictably and uh, they fire a bullet that comes out pretty fast. Now I'll use a, a rocket on them. I hate them. And there's another another normal human boss. Full on health. Good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, no ass. Oh, this music is so cool. I say that about every stage, but it's true. I 
feel bad doing any sort of commentary over over this music. I guess there's other replays of the music too. That's my YouTube channel. Hey. I've been telling people for this game about this game for years and years and years and years. I always try to get people to play this game. I've, I've, I've even forced it on people in main tournaments twice. Of course, maybe part of that was me wanting to, to kick everybody back. Reach the gospel of soft creatures. Wow, there's four soldiers that were supposed to spawn at the top today. They died to the red gem. Oh, and it despawned the, uh, the weapons that were left up here. That's nice. That's okay. Still good. Hey, it's gem world. Hey, shout out to Adam. using like Murray B at, at all during this run, but she'll get her time to shine on the next level. Uh, this boss is kind of annoying, so time to start using some rockets. There are uh, a couple bomb pickups on the next stage, so. Stage six. There's seven stages if you switch routes. If you don't switch routes, it's actually six stages, but. So you'll notice right away that Milky's been pretty fast for most of this game. Now she's moving slow. If I switch to Marie, she moves way faster. This is because uh, this game has a weird system where every character has a uh, has a certain rating for each level. And the higher the rating, the faster they move on that particular level. It's a, it's a pretty weird system, and like it's not not explained very well. But like it definitely pays to know which characters uh, get the speed boost or whatever. Whoa. Yeah, rolling on a while you're holding onto a ladder looks pretty weird. I should mention that there's, uh, there's actually two versions of this game, if you, uh, if you look at emulators, uh, two ROM sets. There's one version, the, the version I'm playing right now, where you get three lives when you play team mode, or three lives when you play uh, solo mode, lonely wolf mode, but it doesn't show you the, uh, the ratings, the star ratings that characters get between levels, and the, uh, all the damage is doubled. But on the other version, uh, instead of having three lives, you only have one life. Even when you play team mode, all three characters uh, share the same life bar, which is kind of a weird, a weird system. Like it makes much more sense to, for each character to have their own individual life bar. I would say. 
And it, it's weird because it's like a. Uh... Sorry, Marie. It's an actual change in the uh, in the program ROM. It's not a uh, a soft dip or anything like that. And there's never been it's never been clear why there's two different versions of it. It's thought that the uh, the One Life version was an earlier revision because everybody that, that has a uh, MVS cart has reported that the uh, the serial number on it was pretty low. But any time I ever saw this in the arcade, it was uh, it was this version, the revised version. And I've had a uh, I've owned MVS cartridges with serial numbers in like the 15,000s or whatever, so it's definitely a later revision. But it's the version I prefer, it makes a lot more sense. Unfortunately, most of the uh, the ports, like the, uh, the PS2 port, the SNK Arcade Classic port, they used the One Life version. And they didn't give an, an option to pick the Three Lives version. I can confirm the uh, the PS3 port, the one that's on PSN, or Anna and Vita, is the, uh, the Three Lives version. The speed up. You don't see many speed ups in this game. Oh, and then, as mentioned earlier, this game did get a sequel called Shock Trooper Second Squad. It came out less than a year after this. And despite sounding like it was not a, uh, not much of an upgrade, it's actually a completely different game. Like, even the, even the engine feels different. They changed everything. They changed the characters, they changed the enemies. And instead of going with this, uh, this wonderful hand-drawn art, uh, they went with ugly pre-rendered graphics, and that turned off a lot of people. And the game had really bad slowdown problems. Really bad. Especially if you were playing with two people. Oh god. In some ways, it actually makes the game easier. But, uh... Unfortunately, I also don't think that, uh... Second Squad is really as solid an experience as the, uh, as the first. For various reasons. Namely, the uh, the difficulty balance just doesn't feel right. Uh, enemy attacks do way too much damage, so it's really really risky to play for, for score a lot of the time. It's more challenging, you can say that much, but... A lot of people hate on the game, and it sounds like I'm just <laughs> talking shit about it, but... Over the years, I came, to, I came to appreciate the game for what it is. Like, it's still a good game, it just doesn't pull the camp to this. If you take it a... That's its own game. It's all right. Maybe in the next marathon I'll play it. Just a, just a complete series. There will be a, there will be another marathon of this, I'm sure. But I'm already I'm already regretting only signing up for two games. I wish I signed up for more, but eh. next time. This has, been, this has been really fun. Anyway, well I've been blabbing. Stage six, uh, punk boss, another, another super soldier jumping out of his tank. I'm just trying to do enough damage to him to the point where he's flashing red. And he's gonna start rolling again. Yeah. Whoa! Caught that guy with the the tail end of the active frames there. Right, I'm just gonna wait for this guy to stop rolling. Then he's gonna start aiming his gunshots towards me. And now we strike. Right. Just making sure how much health everybody has. Oh, there's the booty. Final stage, we finally reached the, the Bloody Scorpion's headquarters. I'm gonna put an end to this. Ah, that's not good. Ooh, that's good. Good health drops. Drops are, of course, random, so that was pretty lucky. Oh. That's OK. 
Okay. Oh, sh <laughs> Sorry, Milky. Please have some help. Alright, well. I'm still in okay shape. I'm gonna be using Big Mama for the, the final push. I'm gonna take these out because two soldiers at the bottom are gonna spawn as soon as I make the screen out. Bunch of soldiers rushing out, and then they turn away, so you can kind of ignore them. Last boss has a, a pretty wicked laugh too. <laughs> I bring up the uh, the last boss's laugh because uh, funny story. Uh, the the voice actor that's credited for the uh, the last boss there, he's listed in the credits as uh, Meijin Takahashi, aka. Uh, Master Takahashi, aka Master Higgins, who you may know as the, uh, who used to be kind of the, the unofficial mascot for Hudson back in the 80s. The guy who did a uh, rapid fire like 20 shots a second or whatever. I don't know if it's actually the <laughs> Meijin Takahashi, but I don't know, you don't see many, uh, many people with that name listed in game credit, so. 16 shots per second, sorry. I didn't do my research. Ooh, this fraud. Yeah, gotta deal with a, a lot of jetpack guys on top of this giant uh, plane. Mama, because the red jetpack assholes are coming out. Gotta go. Oh, shit. So these guys as soon as possible, because then more more jetpack guys come out. One final batch of the uh, three red ones. Ah! Oh no, one is just uh, hurting. And now here we go, the last boss. Also, he has a giant sword for some reason. Yeah. Alright, well, this is the last boss, and I could take the easy way out and just uh, kill him by shooting him, but nah, I gotta, I gotta finish him with a big mama punch. Because you do get double points for killing him with a close range attack, which is... Normally he's 800,000, but you get 1.6 million. Even though this isn't a score run. That is it. That is Shock Troopers. Now for the, the long, long, unskippable ending. Well, actually it's not that long, but anytime I played this game in the arcade, I hated having to sit through this just to enter my initials.
<laughs> God damn it, escape. <laughs> oh, get your craigasms ready. Ooh. 